And good evening, my name's Tristan Lowe, welcome to the Over 40s Fitness Podcast. It's a Sunday evening, uh, 1st of October, and what I'd like to do today is discuss what's in my hand here. It's just a, a piece of paper with a couple of notes I've written on it. <clears throat> now, around half past seven, eight o'clock on a Sunday evening, I would imagine it's the norm for a lot of people uh, in couples on their own or in families to do the uh, Netflix and chill, and that is uh, essentially to sit down and watch television between, I don't know, between seven o'clock, eight o'clock, all the way through till 10, 11 o'clock on a, on a Sunday night. And that's not to say that we don't do it on the other nights, but as it's a Sunday, we're just talking. All right, so um, I'd like to actually, the title of this, uh, this podcast today is um, Streaming Services Will Make You Fat and Your Bank Account Thin. All right, so let's go, let's start. Uh, I would say if you walk through most uh, modern towns and cities in the country today, in the UK, in Europe, North America, um, you would see uh, a, a large percentage of houses, flats, accommodation, anywhere, that have uh, got some kind of um, streaming channel on TV. That will be Amazon, Netflix, uh, Sky TV, uh, maybe the, uh, the, uh, the Disney Channel, and all those other channels that people subscribe to. Now, fun fact, I actually subscribe to two myself, but what we're gonna talk about today is how constant subscribing to, um, to streaming channels on television, irrespective of whether it's for you, husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, daughters, friends, family, you've got these multiple, multiple, uh, multiple channel devices where you can put four or five in the same house. There's a reason they do that, and that's to actually ensure that you or your family and friends, whoever lives in the same house, become uh, as a whole hooked, but more, independ more importantly, independently hooked on streaming their, their, their TV channels or their movie channels or, or whatever, yeah. uh, and hence why they made the, uh, the technological marvel of uh, giving you streaming services across different devices. All right, so let's look at the costs. So right, let's start with one that a lot of men and some women, but a lot of men growing up in the 80s and 90s subscribed to from day one, just like that. And that would be, yep, that one there, the, the first one, that's Sky Sports. Okay, I used to watch a lot of sports growing up. I was into sports myself, I'm still into sports now, but I slowed down watching sports because I've realized it's time wasted. Okay, it's not actually quite an intelligent thing to do for a grown man to spend a lot of his waking life watching other men earn millions of dollars or millions of pounds uh, playing sport. When you step back and watch it, it's actually quite an absurd thing to do. But that's for another discussion for another day. We're looking at the cost of Sky Sports. Entry level to uh, having a Sky Sports package is around 35 pound a month, and it actually does go up. But let's say the basic is 35 pound a month, that's 420 pound for the year. All right, let's throw in Netflix as well. That, you know, the phrase Netflix and chill, that phrase was invented in the USA, okay, and it spread its way across into Europe and, other, and the UK and other countries as well. The phrase Netflix and chill, I've heard many people say it, I've actually found myself saying it myself, but I tried to stop. Uh, and that is to essentially create a accepted, embraced culture, meaning not necessarily that you're gonna watch the, uh, the Netflix channel, but you're gonna watch something on TV tonight. Nobody says, I'm gonna watch ITV and chill. One thing is because most of the, uh, the stuff on ITV is horrendous. No one says I'm going home tonight and it's BBC Two and chill. Okay, it's Netflix and chill because Netflix have mastered the idea and the technique and a lot of hard work that goes into it into getting us hooked on their, uh, on their product, essentially, on their streaming channel. So Netflix, uh, 11 pound a month, it went up recently, and I'm supposed to some degree, right, rightly so, because they have a lot of good content on it. All right, so 11 pound a month, 132 pound a year. Okay, Amazon, you know, one of the world's biggest companies, they know what they're doing. They've got us buying their products, they've got us uh, watching their products as well. And Amazon, that are constantly doing these reimagining of old stories and whatnot. But that's for a different discussion for another day. But what we are looking at here, again, is the cost. Entry level for Amazon for an adult is nine pound a month, uh, 108 pound for the year. All right, so up to now we've done Sky Sports at 35 pound a month. We've done Netflix at 11 pound a month. Amazon, Amazon Prime at nine pound a month. And finally, the one that's been out for about three to four years now, and that's the Disney Channel, uh, Disney Plus, uh, and that's around eight pound a month. Uh, I, I have checked, it's actually gone up a bit than that, but the entry level is eight pound a month, eight to 96 pound a year. All right, now, it doesn't sound like a lot of money, you know, uh, Sky Sports, Netflix, Amazon, Disney, what they are independently each month, but you put them together, 
That's, that's the basic package for each one, yeah? No add-ons, £756 uh, for the year. Now, £756 for the year, if you, if you keep those streaming channels going for 10 years, there you go, that's £7,500 straight away. All right, now 10 years sounds like a long time. They know what they're doing. All right, even if you don't subscribe for 10 years across those four channels, you might only subscribe for five, six, seven years. But of course, the prices slowly but surely uh, increase, they go up. So you could reach that 7,500 figure um, sooner than you thought, or at least a number close to it. Now, let's get back to just for one year. That's 756 pound, which is the bare minimum, okay? And some of those channels as well, you have to pay for, uh, soon we'll be paying for adverts as well. And bearing in mind, we uh, quite a lot of the time, the, uh, the content on those channels is the content that they've made. Yeah, it's not always movies they've bought, but some, a lot of the time, especially with um, Disney and Netflix and Amazon, it's the content that they've actually made themselves. It's not always uh, a world famous IP that they bought from someone else. Okay, so now the reason that I've titled uh, today's uh, podcast is that streaming channels will make you fat and your bank account thin. All right, let's think about it. If we spend um, seven days, let's take one day off. If we spend six nights a week, Monday through Saturday, or we miss one night, I don't know, whatever it is, but just those six nights a week, that's a minimum 24, 24 nights a month, all right? And that's if we miss one night. If one night we're not sat watching any form of streaming channels on our TV, iPads, iPhones, laptops, anything like that, um, that means that we are spending a lot of time sat down. No one watches their favorite show running you know, on a treadmill um, or cycling on a bike or playing golf or swimming. All right? Generally not, we, we, we sat down watching it. And whilst we sat down watching it, we're consuming their content. And often we tend to consume something else as well. And that's dinner, evening meal, supper, as some people call it, treats, alcohol, cigarettes, um, anything like that. People tend to consume physically through the mouth whilst they consume with their eyes and ears watching some form of a, a streaming service. So um, just actually step back and take a look at it. Are you spending a lot of time watching other people earn money on streaming channels whilst you are um, keeping yourself unfit and unhealthy? Now, there are gonna be plenty of people out there, like myself, that keep themselves healthy and fit, that exercise regular, eat good food for the most part, um, sleep well, uh, keep alcohol and junk food to a minimum, play a sport. You could have people that are built like Olympic athletes that still have some kind of streaming channels, but that is not the norm. The norm is that the people that invent, uh, who spend uh, hundreds of millions of dollars building these platforms to build them up, they want us to stay at home, okay, and consume what they want us to watch, but not actually go out or go outside and exercise, or go to the local gym, or go to a local tennis club, or boxing club, or mixed martial arts, or go swimming. They don't want us to do that, because whilst you're doing that, you're spending your time getting healthy and fit, which means in the long run, that you are physically, mentally, emotionally, um, and possibly academically, uh, you've got more opportunity, you've got more chance, if you are physically healthy and fit, in making good decisions, to stop consuming um, uh, streaming channels. Now. That's just the numbers. Now look at this. If it's gonna be 756 pound a year for those, those services, or seven and a half thousand pound over 10 year period, you might think there's no way I'm gonna do that. Well, go back and pick one of those channels that you, that you subscribe to. Go back and pick one of them, okay, and do the numbers. It's highly unlikely you only subscribed five days ago or five months ago. It's more likely you subscribed years ago, but let it carry on. So just think about it again. If you're consuming streaming channels on television, okay, full transparency, I watch two myself, yep, at least two, and actually one of those is going soon, so I'll leave you with that. Whilst you're consuming other people's um, uh, business, and it's a legit business, it's legal, it's, you know, it's a world phenomenon, yep, okay, it is in some countries and it isn't in others. Other countries and different cultures, they've got their own form of um, uh, entertainment, but remember, if we go back centuries ago, um, the, uh, the Caesars of Rome kept the people, the poor and the peasants, and the badly educated and unhealthy people, they kept them poor and badly educated and unhealthy by putting on the gladiator games. That is what the actual, um, the people that ran um, uh, ancient Rome did. 
they didn't do it. You know, yes, they were bloodthirsty people, but, but uh, uh, if history shows us, the sole purpose, uh, there was two reasons, because most of the actual centurions and the fighters back in the Roman and the Greek, uh, the, uh, the Italian and the Greek um, uh, times, they didn't actually spend all day fighting. So they actually put them in the pits to fight there. But the bigger reason was, was to keep the people, keep the people under them, okay, uh, placated or docile by watching sports and entertainment of its time, as bloodthirsty as it was, that's what they did. Yeah, they, they fed them entertainment to keep them distracted and docile and stop them from looking after their own health. Because what they were watching was, I suppose for the time, world-class athletes fight to the death. Um, maybe not always, but that's the whole point. Everyone's seen Gladiator, I enjoyed it, but it's a two hour distraction. Imagine what that was like in, in, in ancient Rome. Yeah, keep them uh, docile and placated and stop them from looking after their own body. All right, okay, so the, uh, the whole point of that is, if you uh, are to spend, you know, um, six nights a week, 52 weeks a year watching that, it's highly likely that unless you work out and look after your health, you're going to put on weight. You're going to put on body fat and visceral fat. Yeah, men in their 30s, 40s and 50s or even lower, you know, your energy levels are going to drop. Your testosterone levels are going to drop. You're going to start wanting um, for other, for, uh, other um, sources of visible entertainment. And we all know what that is as well, okay? And it's legal, so, all right. And my point there is, if streaming services will make us fat and our bank accounts thin, why would you subscribe to it? Why do we actually, why do we take these, these streaming services on? And it's because they know how to do it. Even people with, you know, a modicum of intelligence, that starts with me, um, will subscribe to something. No, you know, we're not immune to it. Yeah, so go through the next time you're watching all these daytime soaps and daytime TVs. People still watch things like EastEnders and Coronation Street. That's fine if it's your grandma or your granddad or your great aunt. They've probably earned the right to do, do you? Whatever you keep, whatever makes you entertained is good, is, you know, is, is fine by me. I'm just giving you the numbers and the facts because they are facts. These streaming services do exist. We do spend way too much time watching them. And whilst we're doing that, we're not looking after our health. So... My advice, let's start with us, let's start with the men. Stop doing that. Stop spending your Saturday and Sunday worrying about um, a sports team of multi-millionaires. And quite often, those guys are half our age, um, earning money even if they play badly, even if they don't play for the team, the fact they're on the books. You know, we've all got our, our favorite football team or something like that, or rugby or cricket or whatever. Um, and um, there's always one or two players, they call them scrubs in America, over here, they just call them lazy or subs, um, who don't actually play their sport. They've just been signed by the team. Somehow they've got them their way into uh, a local football team or, or a professional football team. And all they do is train. They don't, they're not actually goal scorers. They're not even part of the starting 11. And yet, the, even those players, yeah, technical, you know, they're, they're technically because they're on the books of the team, even they can become wealthy and millionaires over a space of time you know, from actually being okay at sport, not even better than the players who are starting each week. All right, and uh, women do it as well. Women subscribe to uh, watching people play sports on TV. That's something that I've seen on the rise over the last 10 years. You know, I went to a football match recently and saw quite a few women in the, at, the, uh, at the game, the local game, um, and uh, yeah, there's another story. All right, okay, so, that's it for today. This is not a rant. This is just uh, my take as a professional personal trainer. I've been working in the industry for some time now. And quite often we do, we do have conversations about who's winning what, who's done what, who's signing for who, or what's on TV, what's your favorite box set. I think there's actually an article out there. Um, and um, it was something about, you can, you can sort of gauge uh, the demographic of your friends and family. Let's say you invited people around for dinner. And a discussion that comes up regular, I've done it myself, I know I have, um, is what's your favourite box set? What do you like watching on, on one of these streaming channels? And there's always someone who's got a favourite show, okay, whether it be your classics, I don't know, Breaking Bad, uh, The Sopranos, uh, The Wire, Game of Thrones, things like that. Um, everyone's got their favourite. Um, and it's fine. It's fine for us to have a form of entertainment but just like anything else, anything, everything in moderation, yet yeah, don't spend too much time 
consuming other people's entertainment, that, that uh, other people's forms of entertainment that they get rich for on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis, um, and you spend your hard-earned time and money paying to watch someone else have a great life. It's actually quite an absurd thing to do. All right, okay, that's it. My name's Tristan Lowe, and the podcast is The Over 40s Fitness. Um, if you've got anything you'd like to uh, throw in here, okay, uh, uh, this is not me judging. Um, this is me just talking about it, my findings and my takings on it. And I've actually done something about it myself recently. You know, I've unsubscribed for one of the three uh, streaming services that I subscribe from. And next week, another one's going to go as well. It's just a distraction to keep us unhealthy, unfit, and our bank accounts empty. All right. Please uh, like, subscribe and share the uh, podcast if you'd like to. Um, but feel free to, to make a comment. I'm always happy to answer. All right, it's Sunday night. I'm going to go and have a cup of tea. And uh, I'm not going to Netflix and chill. I've actually got some work to do for work tomorrow for a couple of clients. All right, see you on the next one. Bye for now.